My name is Sue Corson. I'm president of Neurofibromatosis Ontario, and it's an organization that um, is a support group as well as we raise funds for research, um, liaison with medical professionals. Neurofibromatosis is a condition that um, it's a genetic disorder that causes tumors to develop on nerves in the body and on the body and manifests itself in different ways including um, fibromas uh, which are little tumors that develop on the skin and someone with neurofibromatosis can have hundreds of bumps all over the body. The purpose of the camp is to get families and individuals who are affected by neurofibromatosis together in solidarity. Neurofibromatosis happens one in 3,000. A lot of the time uh, people are very isolated that have it because of the visual differences and it can cause disfigurement so it's very difficult for them. So the camp was started so that everybody can get together and support. Okay, my name's Penny Don Kernot. Um, I was born in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm Stephanie. I'm from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Okay, I'm Nina Okorua Four, and and I'm Victor Okorua Four. Uh, I was eight. Just before I turned nine, I found out, and it was uh, devastating. I thought I was gonna die. I was scared. Um, I heard them mention the elephant man and I heard them mention disfigurement and uh, it was scary and knowing that I couldn't get health care but coming to camp and leaving my home, my family, that was really scary. I was four so I know from stories that it was a dentist I believe that sort of saw some signs in my mouth and then I had some further testing done and I don't really know the whole, the whole story as to how the process was though. The Café Olé Spots, it has given me some troubles, as my mom said, the one that they took out here, like, it was a very, very huge, uh, like, not so huge, but, like, a bump on my head, and that really gave me worries, because, because I usually like to hide it, because I don't really, like, uh, want people to be looking at it and asking me what happened, what happened. Like before they even like did the surgery on me and that was back in my country, Nigeria. People were always asking me because I used to wear like a shoe race. Like this shoe like this, they would like put something under that would make it like uh, somehow like somehow like this. So it was like a shoe race. So people were always asking, why do I have a big shoe and a small shoe? And I was like, um, it's, it's a... Is a surgery gone wrong? That's all I kept telling them. That's all I kept telling them. And especially this thing, it really gave me problems as people were like using it as a way to insult me sometimes. And that really gave me, that really gave me problems. And I was also bullied for all the cafe lay spots. You get self-conscious. You don't like to be touched. You don't want people to, if you don't trust them, it's like, well, they're, they're going to judge me. So they're going to feel the tumors if they hug me. They're going to they're gonna know that there's something different. Some days yes, some days no. Um, when you have the self-conscious about the tumors, it's hard to think about being with somebody in the future and not know how they're gonna react to the unknown of what you have. Um, I don't always like to go shopping or something because people stare and whisper and even little kids do this. They're kids, they don't know any better, but it doesn't make it not sting. It stings less than a grown-up. Um, so, yeah, I don't like that, but um, I go to powwows and I have community and friends that I like, and those are the important things to me to keep up because they'll protect me and defend me and, you know, probably tell somebody off if they said anything nasty. <laughs> For sure, it's a, it's a confidence thing. I have some facial tumors that I've had multiple surgeries on. They can only decompress, they can't fully remove. And I've been just in public uh, in clothing that shows more of the tumors and been called some pretty rude names from people. So it's it's, it's struggle with like confidence and all that. I was um, embarrassed and I used to wear baggy clothes and hide my body and whatnot. And uh, also I, uh, had come out around that time and didn't really know what I was 
I was scared and confused and it affected me a lot because I just uh, felt uncomfortable in my own skin until I had those surgeries and then uh, you know having 500 tumors removed gave me the self-esteem that I needed to realize that I'm not NF but I have it and I'm writing a book called I am NF um, because I want to tell the story from it. Always tell them this isn't part of me this like I know who I am like don't mind all this you see in my body like these things doesn't have, like it doesn't uh, affect me like before I came to Canada that was back in my country Nigeria I was like very like free like it was almost like I was like a no like, like normal like them as normal as them so it didn't give me any any worries like I was able to live like a normal life that everybody li were living just like a normal person well <laughs> You know, something about this problem, it's, um, you know, when you hear, when you hear that progressive, you know, here is NF1. You know, when you hear progressive, you just don't know what is it going to progress into. And you see people with um, complaints like, oh, I had this, I, so you're like, you're always so conscious of that. Is it going to get to that? You know, every time that I go to the doctor, I ask him, um, is it going to be all right? He say, oh yeah, they have, they usually have normal life. They usually have normal life, but um, the, the, the main problem that I have with it is progression. And really you see the spots increasing and getting bigger, and larger and multiplying and um, yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a concern. It's a concern for the future, but um, I'm still hopeful because he's, uh, he has very good spirits. I sort of think of it as an anvil over my head because I can go blind, I can go deaf, I can lose a limb, I can die, I can get tumors. And, and some days that line is held by a thin spider thread. And other days it's held by a great big industrial thing they have at the docks and it doesn't it's not as bad but we're all dying anyway we're all going to so I just try to remember that and try not to let it uh, be too heavy on me and go to my friends and family when I'm scared uh, depression uh, I tried to kill myself after my last relationship I took a hundred uh, Valium and 75 Flexerol. Um, I don't know how I'm still alive, but I'm glad uh, I wasn't successful. But I was at my wit's end. I had just ended a relationship and I thought no one would ever love me. And I tried it when I was 14. I tried to kill myself. Um, but now uh, it causes depression, it causes sadness. But I try to say to myself that I'm allowed to be sad, I'm allowed to be mad, but not to get stuck in it. So I really try. And I did therapy and stuff. And what I learned in therapy is that I have to use the tools, grounding myself or calling a friend. And I, when I do those, I'm more successful and I'm less burdened by it. When I don't, I'm more depressed. So it does cause mental health issues. I don't know if I can be diagnosed with depression, but it does cause it because you're isolated I'm isolated and most of the time I do it to myself because I'm afraid I haven't been diagnosed with depression but I've been diagnosed with anxiety and they tie it to the NF I think they should be covered in Manitoba it's covered I get everything covered for removal I haven't had to fight for it so given the situation and what it is I think it should be covered automatically they called him uh, devil's horn. He has devil's horn. So it's not like I'm trying to do a facelift for my son. No, it's not like I'm trying to w w do a nose work, like to get him more handsome. No, I'm just trying to get him like every other child. So I should, um, I should get help. And I would love Ohit to not consider it cosmetic. It's a big difference if you want a facelift or if I wanted to get this done. Sure, I don't like the big thing. In that's cosmetic to me, 
but getting a few tumors isn't cosmetic. Hi, I'm Muskan Sashdeva. I'm a first year medical student at University of Toronto. I'm a team lead for the National Neurofibromatosis Skin and Mental Health Survey. We've gathered here this weekend at Camp Wanakita to better understand how neurofibromatosis skin symptoms have affected individuals on a mental health level. Currently, there is no OHIP coverage for the removal of neurofibromas, which are present on the skin, their skin tumors and facial tumors. We are here to advocate for the surgical removal of these tumors, and hopefully they can be covered by OHIP soon. I have my team here that I'd like to introduce. We have Olivia Mendoza, Anne Wilfred, Ananya Patek, and Francis Lau. Thank you so much, and please check out Neurofibromatosis Ontario and access our survey. If you have absolutely any feedback, please let us know. We'd love to hear it. Thank you.